um, portion of the webinar is used to chat to provide any comments and we'll have some questions as we go through. For now, we're gonna kick off a poll. We're gonna hope, just launch this poll. It will help us to understand who's in the audience with us here today, experience level at living gluten-free and, and enjoying gluten-free eating. We'll take just about 20, 25 seconds here to let you take our quick poll. Hey, okay. thanks for taking that poll. You were all pretty quick. So Sherry, it looks like we've got a good mix. We've got some people in our audience who are very experienced at the gluten-free lifestyle who have been eating gluten-free for three or more years, but we have some people who are new to gluten-free living as well. So we just wanna get started and talk a little bit about gluten-free eating and what's important for some people. And then we're gonna talk about all the great goodies that we're doing. I have all my goodies here. Sherry's in her kitchen today, but I have all these two that came in your sample bag from Bueller's. Um, gluten in it is a protein that's found in wheat, barley, and rye. Um, so obviously when you're looking at gluten cells, which many of you know, you're avoiding really those three grains or products that have those three grains. It can be tricky not because oats themselves contain gluten, but because oats are often processed in a facility that maybe also processes wheat. Um, there are many people who have an disorder called celiac disease where they actually can't tolerate gluten at all. Even the smallest amount of gluten can cause GI distress for those individuals. And if you are gluten sensitive, if you haven't been tested for celiac, it might be worthwhile to get tested for celiac because then your doctor can really pay attention to you to like your blood levels of key nutrients to make sure that your absorption in your system is really good and that you're not having problems or damage to your system. We also know that there are some people who test negative for celiac disease but are all gluten sensitive. And I know Sherry, this is the case with your actually. Yeah, it is. And you know, gluten sensitivity or gluten intolerance, it will vary by the person. Um, my husband tends to be gluten intolerant. He has an autoimmune disease. It's not a life-threatening thing, um, something that they just found in him, but he finds that too much gluten does cause him some gastric distress. And so he has opted to eliminate it from his diet. And so we follow a gluten-free lifestyle. But that's not to say um, if we're out somewhere, he's not gonna worry if a little salad dressing might have a little bit of you know, starch in it or wheat in it, or if there's a dusting on something. Whereas again, somebody who's got true celiac, if they're eating gluten, as you said, Annette, that will cause such inflammation, typically in the small intestinal tract, I mean, it actually kind of destroys the intestinal tract. I mean, it's really, really dangerous. And of course, those people are just very vigilant about avoiding gluten and even cross-contamination at all. So again, with the gluten intolerance, you know, it's, it's just, my husband goes by how he feels. Obviously, if he eats a regular slice of bread, he's gonna have some issues. But again, um, if we're eating out, we do ask the question um, if there's a way to make the meals gluten-free and that sort of thing. But people just have to really, pay attention to what works for them with the gluten intolerance. Um, it may be very small amounts are tolerated. It may be that they just try to avoid it totally. Yeah, and Sherry, just for attendees today, I did do it in the chat. I posted a document that we created for Bueller's that is gluten-free right for me. Mm -hmm. That can really help you understand if you will benefit. Um, some of you who've been doing this for more than years, you're already benefiting from a gluten-free lifestyle. If you're new to this, it'll help you kind of define um, different parts and pieces. So included a lot in the. What and you know, and then some people, some people too, we should say try gluten free, right? They try it because maybe they think it's going to help them with weight loss or, you know, just help them feel better, more energetic. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think the steps we're going to walk through today and really talk about. Um, just because something's gluten-free, just following a gluten-free diet, you still have to make sure there's a balance there and that it's a healthy diet that you're going to follow. Um, nothing wrong with trying it. If you find it doesn't work for you, you know, that you can go back to the way you were eating. But we do talk to a lot of people who just try it for different reasons. Yeah, no, no, great point, Sherry. And Sherry, you come to agree. One of the things that I think is really important is to understand that there are so many options in the grocery store, including Bueller, of course, that 
naturally gluten-free. So you think about the produce department, you think about fresh meat, seafood, um, poultry, so many options in those areas, yes. rice. Fruits and vegetables really throughout the store, so canned options, frozen options. There's so many foods inherently gluten-free throughout the store um, that you have to choose from. And so we really focus on, you know, how do you, how do you start building your eating habits based on those? But then we also, Sherry, like you said, sometimes you want a piece of bread, you want to make a sandwich. Um, you know, there are times when you want grain food with the holiday coming up, you know, people are baking more. And so you want those options of categories that are additionally primarily wheat based, but obviously you need to avoid wheat. So that's where it's really important to look at labels. One of the nice things at Bueller's is that they actually have a healthy living tag program where they're tagging the gluten-free items. And then they have healthy living sections in many aisles of the store where they actually bundle all the products that are gluten-free together. It's easier for you to find those items in the aisles of the stores so you don't have to spend as much time label reading because those items have already been identified for you. So one of the things that I think is great, Sherry, and I know we about this is Bueller's is really great at looking at what's new next what are the new gluten-free products we've talked about that gluten-free has come a long way in quality and taste right 15 years ago the options you had don't even compare to the options today oh that's that's totally true Annette and you know because my husband's been following a gluten-free diet for years we have seen the items that have you know some of them just were really not palatable <laughs> I'd rather just not eat it at all. But now the varieties of breads and crackers and, and snack items, um, pasta has come a long way. There's just so many options now. And again, as you and I walked the Bueller stores, we were really amazed at the variety and uniqueness of so many products that people could try that were really, really good. Yeah, I agree. So Sherry, I know you're set up today to kind of walk us through all the items in the sample bag that are attended received from Bueller's, um, but we we'll turn it over to you to have you walk us through what you've got on your kitchen counter there today. Sounds good. Who doesn't like a goodie bag, huh? And it was so fun uh, when that and I got the same uh, sample bag that all of you got or picked up at the store, I think. And so I kind of went through there and, and you know, a lot of the things in there are kind of snacking items, but again, how do you make those fit into a very balanced diet? And as Annette was talking about, when it comes to gluten-free products, again, so many things that are naturally gluten-free, but how do we replace those things with the, the, the wheat in it and the, those breads and crackers and all of that and the products um, and recipes we wanna make with those. So what I did is I went through the bag and kind of and talked about a little options here that we'll walk through. First of all, we've got um, our Pirate's Booty and some great snacks that are in there. Okay, they're snacks, they're, they're good as they are, right? <laughs> My husband's favorite snack is pirate booty. I have to tell you, pirate's booty, he absolutely loves that. But there's nothing artificial in it. It's very tasty when you want a crunchy, salty, you know, flavorful snack, it's there. So these options are wonderful. Um, you also had a coupon in there for one of the um, Caesar's Kitchen frozen meals. Um, again, talk about convenient. We keep an abundance of gluten-free frozen meals in our freezer as my husband is still going off to lunch every day. Sometimes he takes leftovers, but other times he needs a quick meal. Um, he often sometimes has lunch at work too, or they you know, come in and serve them lunch, and he can't eat it because it's not gluten-free. So he will take these or keep them even in the kitchen at his workplace, um, and they are really delicious as well. There's so many varieties now of the gluten-free meal, so give that one a try if you haven't tried the Caesar's Kitchen ones yet. Um, some other things that were in the bag, this pure um, sugar-free organic cookie mix here. Um, this is an interesting one, and I like that this time of the year, again, it's still a cookie, right? But when we want an option to have something sweet, when people are enjoying a cookie with some coffee or tea um, over the holiday season, it's nice to have an option and to put something like this out. You could even put green and red sprinkles on top and make them like Christmas cookies if you want, but for, for you as an individual following gluten-free or somebody's coming to your house following a gluten-free diet, it's a very nice option to have in a convenient mix. And it's just some butter um, and an egg that goes right within that mix. So very easy there. Well, um, and Sherry, I love about the cookie mix, honestly, and, and we've talked about gluten-free 
it. One thing that's nice about that product too, is it's also organic. Mm -hmm. So I think this idea that if you have multiple factors in your food choices that are important to you, this is one that kind of gives you that option of an organic gluten-free option as well, which is a nice option for people who also are committed to organic. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really nice. Um, another thing that's in there that's kind of a sweet treat, I'm talking about the sweet treats first, but these little char um, chocolate sticks, and they are really like little mini candy bars. I mean, let's face it, they're absolutely delicious. Um, but again, when you want something like that and you need a gluten-free option, it's nice to keep them on hand. They're only 100 calories. Um, they're not that much. I paired it with some fruit here. So again, how do I take something that's a sweet treat and make it a little bit healthier for a snack? Cup of tea, a cup of coffee there. Um, I paired it with some apples, but you could certainly put any other fruit with that and it would be fine. And those are, like I said, quite tasty. Um, we've got the Char honey grams in there. If you've got kids that are following a gluten-free diet that might have been diagnosed as celiac, these are really nice. Um, I really like the flavor of these, the crunch, the texture. There's um, a couple grams of fiber in there. And what I've done here is I've taken a couple of those um, graham crackers and I just put a spread of peanut butter on it. Any kind of nut butter would be good. You're adding some healthy fats, some protein to that. And I've got banana slices on it, apple slices, whatever you want to do, but it really makes a nice snack, maybe with a glass of milk for a kid or yourself as well. And Sherry, that's a great option, especially now as um, if schools are doing distance learning or more schools now are, are going mm -hmm. to distance learning. That's a great option that, you know, middle school kids could easily make themselves or, you know, even a little bit younger kids. And so that's a nice option if you just have those ingredients kind of set out. Kids can come through and snack on their own time, but you have that option of kind of an assembly that they can do yeah. themselves, which I like. Yeah, very simple. And they come in this bigger pack in the store. I know we got a little sample bag um, in our in our um, Bueller's bag here, but but you can get those at the store in the bigger bag. Um, then we got some of these great Nature's Bakery um, fig bars and raspberry bars. Again, they've made with some whole grains. Um, yes, there's some sugar in there, as most bars of this type do have, but they're filled with real fruit, which is really nice. And then an ancient grains are in there, so it adds that crunch. What I did with those to make a little snack or easy breakfast even is I crumbled up one of those fruit bars, some of it on the bottom. I put fresh raspberries on there. Then I used a low sugar Greek yogurt um, that, I, that I put in the middle, vanilla, low sugar Greek yogurt, put some more raspberries on top, any kind of berries will work, and then crumble the rest of that bar on top. So it's just a way to add some nutrient rich foods with that bar with the great flavor and the grains that are in that bar um, to make a really nice little parfait there. Well, and Shana talked about too that it's a great if you have, say on a Sunday morning and even if it's just your family, you do like a parfait bar where you set up different mm -hmm. options and everyone can build their own. This is great because then it meets the needs of those in your family who are gluten free. Right, yeah. And that's a really fun way to have breakfast too because I know Beeler's has a lot of gluten free granolas as well, you know, mm -hmm. that you could use on that um, yogurt bar, but all sorts of fresh fruits. And yeah, that makes just a nice option for sure. This one I had a lot of fun with. With the holidays coming up, um, I took these fabulous. Crunch Master Crackers, and I made a little charcuterie board here, and everybody loves them. Um, you can put it out for, you know, appetizers. Um, I even have it sometimes for dinner with my husband, I have to admit. Um, it goes over well, but if you look at this, what's on here, I've got some almonds on there, I've got some dried apricots, some prosciutto, two kinds of cheese, a low-fat cheddar and a gouda cheese, some fresh grapes, some fig jam, and then I've added those Crunch Master Crackers on there. And Annette has heard me say this before, but Crunch Master Crackers are the ones that we buy in our house and we always have them here. They're actually preferred even by our non-gluten, the people who are, can eat gluten because the crunch, the flavor of them, they're absolutely delicious. They keep their shape. Um, they're just really wonderful. And I buy them by the box full, uh, the big box full. And that is our go-to cracker. But again, if you look at that charcuterie board, it doesn't, I mean, nobody has to even know it's gluten-free, right? And why would they? It's just everybody loves everything on there. It's delicious. And Sherry, like you said, it's great for a small family gathering over the holidays, but it's also great even for a dinner. And what I love about it, and I think this was your point, of gluten-free isn't inherently nutritious and healthy. So this is a great example where you've got 
the free options, but you've also got a really ba great balance. You've got some nuts, which have healthy fats. You've got yep. fruit and veg, you know, which is a dairy. So it's a really well balanced meal while still being gluten free, which is great. That's perfect. That's right. You could add some pickled vegetables to that, which I forgot today, and that, sorry. <laughs> okay. But we had those, some pickled green beans on there too, which I found that were gluten-free. Um, so yeah, you know, the options with making boards are endless. It really is fun to create those, and there's certainly many ways to do that in a gluten-free manner. So the other thing, um, we didn't get a sample of this in our packet, but I know that Bueller sells gluten-free stuffing mixes and breadcrumbs. So that's one of the things, especially around the holidays, is people miss. You know, I love our stuffing. You know, do I have to forgo stuffing? Of course not. There's gluten-free mixes that you can buy. You can certainly buy gluten-free bread and cube it up and make your same traditional stuffing. We've got celery and onions in here. I put shredded carrots and I put some low sugar dried cranberries in here mm -hmm. um, just to pump up the nutrition a little bit. But, you know, great side dish as you're moving forward through the holidays. You could also do some rice stuffing with brown rice, um, which is going to be gluten free. So look for those options as well. But, and, you know, breadcrumbs. We buy um, gluten free regular breadcrumbs and the panko breadcrumbs. If we're doing fish, if we want to bread anything, um, again, those options are there. They're easy to use, just the same as, as even flowers in it. We know Bueller's has a lot of flowers now. If you're gonna make your own gluten-free breads or cookies, um, now the flours, they used to, you have to, used to have to add things to it to make them rise properly. Now there's one called Cup for Cup. I know Namaste makes one. Um, Pamela's has a baking mix. We have a lot of these items on our um, gluten-free shopping list that we have on the website. Um, but many of these things, you, you just use equal amounts as you would regular flour now. And the products come out really, really good. In fact, some of them, again, have become our favorites. Pamela's baking mix and pancake mix now is our favorite pancake mix over any other. Even if we don't have to follow gluten-free, we would use it. Yeah, and just because I did include a link, I know that that document was included in your sample bag. Oh, yes. I also included a link to it in the mm -hmm. chat section. Sherry, you and I were talking, so we with a group of Bueller shoppers yesterday as well to talk about gluten-free living and and I mentioned that my next door neighbor has just been recently diagnosed with um, celiac and so over the weekend I was cleaning out my freezer and found a bunch of bananas that I had tossed in so I made our my own family um, a batch of banana bread but then I was like I had some different gluten-free flours in my um, cupboard and so I was gonna try and um, make them my favorite banana bread recipe but do a gluten-free so I did mix of coconut flour, flax seed, and chickpea flour um, in place of um, regular flour in um, my banana red recipe. I thought it was great, but I think it's this idea too that experiment to find the right balance of taste and texture and things like that. And I know you've had friends who've had experience as well of making their own mixes for flours. Right. Some people will experiment and create their own blend, if you will, with a variety of gluten-free flours. Sometimes you have to add a little xanthan gum to it, which you can buy separately to have that, um, you know, lift to the flour. Um, but, uh, you know, try different ones that are out there. And um, one of the, like the cup for cup, for example, I like they have two options. Because I often buy, if I'm buying regular flour, I buy now a white whole wheat flour. Um, then the cup per cup has that option of the regular cup per cup gluten-free flour or a higher fiber, more like a whole grain flour. So I tend to, you know, try them both. You might use them for different things, but the options, like we said at the beginning, have changed so much over the years and there's so many products out there that you can try that, um, again, look at, look at Bueller's. I always encourage people on a gluten-free diet, every time you're at the store, maybe pick up something new. Mm -hmm. try something new, a one or two things um, to see if you will like it. Um, pastas are a big one. I think somebody asked that question yesterday and that yeah. about, you know, our favorite pastas. And mine tend to be ones that are made with brown rice or a blend of brown rice. They tend to um, perform like regular pasta. They don't get mushy. They stay nice and firm. Um, whether it's in a hot dish like spaghetti or, um, or in a cold pasta salad. So if anybody else, you know, if anybody's out there and they have a favorite pasta they use or a favorite flour, please, um, please chime in and let us know in the chat box what you, what you use so we can share that as well. Yeah, so 
few attendees. I know someone just added a question, Sherry, which I'll share. Ask any questions in the chat box for sure. So we had a question about um, that Bueller's Mill Town wants to have all their gluten products in one section, which, you know, I think or Sherry always struggle with, do you do kind of a store within a store concept where they're all in one section or do you integrate them into the aisles? And since then, Bueller has moved to integrating them into the aisles and highlighting them with a healthy living um, signage in the store. Uh, and then the, the attendee asked a question about would there be an opportunity to have a new item area in that, you know, you know oftentimes, especially now you're in an grocery store, um, don't browse necessarily. One of the things that Sherry and I are working with dealers on, and this doesn't apply just to gluten-free, but every month we have a monthly thing that we're focused on. And we need to work on to start building end each month based on the theme. So that doesn't completely meet that need of always having that area but we are happy to pass that feedback along to our colleagues um viewers for sure and you, and you know back to that question of putting all the gluten-free stuff in one section there are so many items now that it would be yeah. very difficult yeah it, it probably would be difficult to do and what people are saying is that when i go to the pastas i want to see you know within the pastas my gluten-free choices what i like about the viewers tags is you don't have to feel like you're on a scavenger hunt. <laughs> and that's what I used to feel like, like, okay, I can't find the gluten-free pastas. Um, where are they? Um, and are even in the aisle, because you know, within the aisle, within the pasta section now, there's so many pastas, regular and gluten-free, and there's veggie pastas, and there's pastas made out of beans, which are gluten-free. So to have them tagged, it kind of is like, I think Annette and I, you talked about, it's like Bueller's is kind of your personal shopper, really helping you direct to those products and making it easy. So you don't have to spend too much time again, and you can be assured without having to read every single label. If they're, if they're tagged with a gluten-free tag, they're going to be gluten-free. Yeah. So attendees, we have one more poll we're going to launch. So I am going to go ahead and launch the next poll. We want to hear from you of all the products in your your sample bag from Bueller's, which one was your favorite? Um, we're curious too, and even if you add a comment about, are there products that you haven't tried before? So you were excited to see them in the sample bag, um, but that might be something you put in the comments. But on the poll, we'd love to hear what's your favorite product. Sherry, I always think yours are the crackers and the pirate booty or your husband. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely those two. And I have to say we've tried, um, the cookie mix was new for me. Um, we have had these little shower, little candy bar, you know, the chocolates before, the graham crackers we've had before. We, we make graham cracker crust with them. Um, if everybody's enjoying this some more down by the fire pit in the summer, my husband doesn't have to feel left out because we have the gluten-free graham crackers there too. So um, yeah, really all the products, but I, I do the crackers and the pirate's booty for absolutely sure in that. Well, sure. You bring up a really good conversation topic um, that um, uh, we're going in next week. And so these shards, the honey grams are great to use to make a, a crust for of a graham cracker crust. You know, there's a lot of people who use nut crust. So you can do almonds or walnuts or things. And have you had a crust with that? So yes, I've actually made a um, crust with pecans before. You know, and there's a little sugar, there's a little butter. I don't remember the exact recipe. People can probably Google it and find it. But um, putting pecans in the food processor or any nuts and grinding them up, and you can just picture it, right? They're kind of ground up, and you've got a little butter going there and a little bit of sugar. It makes a really nice, nice pie crust um, that we've really enjoyed. And a friend of, a friend of mine whose son is gluten-free told me about that. And I think when we think about the flavors that we're used to in Thanksgiving pies, you know, that kind of crust would be great flavor-wise with pumpkin pie oh, or yeah. pecan pie or apple pie, if that's your family's mm -hmm. favorite on Thanksgiving too. So a lot of uh, pumpkin pie is one that's a little bit like a custard. And so you could almost make it without a crust in a different type of bowl, but more as a, a kind of souffle or custard kind of approach, but an option there too. I think it just shows, you know, there's, um, a gluten-free life so many choices of and recipe ideas available good well we will give a, i want to make sure we take any questions our group today
so if anybody has last minute questions, we're happy to take those. Um, otherwise, we hope you really enjoy all the products that are in the sample bag. Um, Annette, what was their favorite? What was their favorite? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. So the three that were the favorite were the Cruncher Cruncher, um, the Cookie. Yes, someone had experience with that and really liked that, and the Dr. Sharp products that they really like those too. So, all good options. Those were the three that rolled to the top of the voting. Good. Perfect. Good. Well, Sherry, I don't see any other questions coming in. Thank you for joining us from your kitchen today, and thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, stay tuned in. Um, uh, December, Sherry and I are focusing with Bueller's Healthy Living Program and Team on healthy swaps for the holidays. So how can you maintain healthy habits throughout the holiday season? So that will be coming your way in December. So thank you everyone for joining us and have a great rest of the day.